Corby Rooster Cape. What's the best use for it? Today we went to Whiting Farms. It was huge. Huge. You're fired. We're on our way to Whiting. Dude, chicken paradise. Where do you go for sushi? Grand Junction. That was amazing sushi. Good sushi. Scuba Steve. Nice. Scruffy Japanese beard. In Grand Junction. In Grand Junction. Insane. Good morning. We are headed to the farm right now. It's gonna be a fun day with chickens. So we've been tracking the elusive genetic hackle bird all the way from Utah. The elusive hackleus chickenus. And we're in the right type of territory. As you can see, the hills are brown. If you see green hills, you're, you're not in the right spot. And then this hill right here we call the yellow knob. And uh, the, the old stories are that the hackle birds would uh, race to the top of Yellow Knob. So I think we're in the right place. We've been tracking for a solid day and a half now. I think we, uh, our search of genetic hackle birds is about to come to an end. know about the red labels and the Hebert miners and the high and dries but Dr. Whiting keeps alive some of the classic lines as well. Uh, we, we're going to show you the historical lines which is a very interesting bird and we'll, we'll listen to Dr. Whiting talk about it. They're very rare. Awesome. They're very delicate. Really? They're such good words. So this is a classic line of hackle that Dr. Whiting keeps going. We mark them. This is the historic line. I got these from Dr. Alan Freed in Roscoe, New York, or Livingston Manor. He was a neighbor of uh, Harry Darby himself. He was a general practitioner in the little town. He knew everyone because of it. Uh, but he maintained these for many years after Harry Darby died. And in the early 90s, maybe 91 or 92, I had heard about him, and or he heard about me, I can't remember. And I sent him a letter. This is back before the internet and emails and he kindly sent me a couple of dozen eggs and I've maintained them all these years and I split them into different colors like this is the grizzly line and some light dun lines in the, the Harry Darby line and I've maintained them. They're a reference line or a library stock I call them and somebody ought to do it uh, and so I've maintained for many years and I've turned a generation about every 14 months on the things. And I've got various lines. I got about three different sources of historical lines back in the 90s. And all of them are fairly intact. I have made them better over the years. I guess I, I had so many of them, I always could pick the best out of the best. And we, but I have to keep a certain number of them to keep them viable from a genetic point of view. If you got too small in numbers, you'd lose your variability and the stocks would be inbred and going downhill. And I've kind of fought my way through that at this point. And they get along pretty well. This is like the third hatch of this go-around. They're fairly strong. What I do is I push down on the chicks to see how strong they are. They're not terribly robust, but considering they are intact from probably the 1960s, 
to 2018 like it is now, that's a long time. So that's their purpose. We mark them in a special way just so we can identify them. And it's just a little notching system where we notch the wing web, uh, the toe web, and they can't lose that. And if you do it right, they didn't bleed, but it never grows back together. And so you know what they are. And it's just a system we've devised that's very convenient. The chicks are too delicate to put leg bands or wing bands on. It just wouldn't be very good for that. They're just too small and delicate. But um, there, I have these de segregating into all what I call the Ca Catskill Classics lines. There's a lot of Grizzlies and Dun Grizzlies and Crees and Dark Duns and Medium Duns and Light Duns. This line happens to incorporate the Grizzlies and the Light Duns. And if I show you the breeders later on, we can take a photograph of them and it'll make a lot more sense. But in the great scheme of things, I think it's important that somebody preserves these historic lines. And um, so I guess I'm it. <laughs> great. That's what I like. In fact, the reason I'm in this business, I think, is I just wanted to have a hatchery and some incubators and breeders, and it just got kind of out of control. <laughs> All right, yeah, you think? Yeah. Uh, we're building five more sheds right now. You probably saw them on the way up. Yeah. You saw these last time, but it's always kind of interesting to see them. You can get in there and meet me. I can shut the slide out. Sure. Okay. We gotta come in here, go through the screen, log in. Here's in your backyard, no biggie. All right. So if you want to raise hackle birds in your backyard, it's not a big deal. You just put in a bunch of stuff like this, uh, so that you know it's all science. But it's not that hard, right? Just grow them in your backyard. When I bought these. Okay, we're gonna go into the breeder barn. These are birds that have been selected for, you know, traits that are ideal for, for whatever Dr. Whiting's trying to do. Um, keep in mind that as we see these birds, he's trimming off some of the hackle for these birds so that they can move around a little bit better. So these are birds that have kind of passed the whole uh, use for fly tying feathers. They're just used for getting it on with the ladies. I'm sorry, the chickens are really loud. I'm trying, we're trying to get them quieted down. So what we, these are our breeders. And you see we've got one rooster. He's an honorary guy. He's gonna peck me here shortly. But he's got like 10 hens. He pretty much has his way with them all day long, every day. What are you so upset about? Look at this. It's really noisy in here. And uh, see how long his cape is. So when I take this splash and I put it on black hens, I get 100% gray. But it segregates into dark gray and light gray and medium gray. Yeah. So it's not a particularly cooperative. Yeah. <laughs> but I just keep them mixed up to keep the gene pool bigger and healthier. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a chevron. Crazy. Yeah. I, I, if I know fly tires, oh, there'll yeah. be a sale. And see they call it a buttercup. You see their comb? Oh, it's yeah. like a cup. <laughs> it's like a cup. Yeah, it's a very obscure little bird. You can see that this could be sellable. Oh, now yeah. I'm keeping them all. See, they lay these tiny little eggs. That would a 100% be sellable. sellable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, these are the little blues. So these are chickens she's actively geneticizing for production. So they're, he's going through the selection of the genetics and other sorts of chicken things we don't understand at all. But these will soon be available to fly tires because they're awesome coloring. Very unique birds. The Fletch is an ancient French breed. And it, the Fletch means arrow, like it's comb. And they're almost extinct. And I'm trying to bring them back 
and you're seeing him here, it's about all I figure. I got started off with one male and one female. Oh, wow. And they used to be a meat bird, and I'm going to try to make them back into one. <laughs> yeah, they're big and tall and a little bit crazy. Yeah, he looks mean. He's like the Brahma bull. Yeah, he looks like the Brahma bull. Better a rabbit. <laughs> So what we've got here is they have so much demand that it's tough to keep up. They're building some new buildings, some uh, more chicken houses. This is pretty cool. The, the scope of this thing is insane. Just how many birds they can house and process. Now we're at the HQ, the headquarters. That's where all the magic happens. Big door so that I can get through. Hey. How's it going? Good, how are Good to you? See you? Nice to see you. Hi. This is the secret to getting good hackle. This is how you get the best whiting feathers. Hay que hablar español con las con las muchachas. This is a variant. This is insane. I'd call it light cree. You're wrong, Whiting. <laughs> Just kidding. Look at this one. This is why you buy variants. And these are pro grade. Now Phil was telling us about pro grade. Sometimes you'll just find some broken tips. And so they can't put a broken tip on a silver or a, or a bronze. So they're pro grades. That's better than any other hackle manufacturers number one grade out there. I'll stand by that. <laughs> yeah, these are crazy. This is how you find out if hackle's good. If it touches your belly button from your nose, it's pretty decent. That's how you, I usually do it. I take off my shirt, hold it up about here, and if it's belly button length, it's sellable. And what grade is that? This is uh, ultra cheech grade. How long are these? Uh, about 26 inches, I think, is what those measure to. 26 inches? There you go. I see. <laughs> but this is crazy. This is what a whiting chicken can produce. That's craziness. This is the queen mother of them all. Platinum. That is so many flies. Maybe you'll get lucky. 15 años. Un ratito, ¿no? Bastante. Lo haces muy bien. Sí. Nosotros somos vendedores de plumas. Oh, sí. Sí. De Utah. Oh, qué bueno. Sí. guys we're headed home after a couple days of hanging with the guys at Whiting it's yeah awesome yeah so we've got some really cool things going on with the guys there um, look for some maybe not well there are some new products but also some uh, 
stuff that's been around that people don't know about. So we're going to work to get that out, show it to everybody. It's going to be awesome. Brought to you by Carmel M&M's. Peace out. Uh -huh.